Hello everyone, this is Marcin and in today's video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about levels adjustment layer in Photoshop. So let's jump right into this. I'm going to open levels adjustment layer and the first thing we need to understand is this RGB which stands for red, green and blue. What is this uh, red, green and blue? Uh, simply is different lights. So we have red light, green light and blue light and these three lights connected together with different intensity give us our image. So when we have some shadows, when we don't have much light, like the model's hair on this image, I can zoom on this, it's on around here, we can clearly say that we don't have much of the lights, all of them. When we look at the other colors, we have a lot of them. So um, when we look at, uh, for example, yellow color, it doesn't mean that it has a lot of yellow light. We don't have this light, but that would be more of a mix of red light and green light. So we have different intensity, we have different mixes, and that give us our image. Below that, we have histogram, and histogram actually tell us the distribution of these lines, the distribution of the pixels. So as you can see on this histogram here, we have some of the dark pixels, and then rest is distributed quite evenly. And looking at this image, we can clearly say the lights are distributed quite evenly, so we don't have really a huge depth from the shadows to the lights, but quite even, except some of the shadows here, which I believe, as I said before, it could be the hair here, and very strong highlights here, which could be this fresh sign over here, uh, maybe something else as well, but except that, evenly distributed. And also below histogram, we have these uh, sliders here. And these sliders is where most of the fun is. Not all of the fun, but most of the fun. So they allow us to manipulate with the certain area of the image. The first slider, the dark one, uh, will be responsible for the shadows mainly. Of course, we can go as far to nearly touch the highlights or even touch the highlights. The middle one will be mid-tones and the bright one will be the highlights. So uh, when we want to increase the darkness of the shadows, we will grab this slider and move it to the right. We change the value here, but what is happening here? Now everything beyond this point now. So all of these pixels that we see here on the histogram don't have any light. So we feel them with the darkness because there is no light. The more I go, towards the right side, the more of the image become completely dark because it will not have any light. And nearly fully, as you can see, we have just barely any color visible uh, because some of the pixels go beyond the histogram, as you can see, and going back. For the highlights, uh, everything beyond this point will be having strong 100% of the lights and going to the left, it will leave us with completely white image because it's it's filled with 100% of the light. If something gets 100% of the light, you can't see it, it will be completely bright. So this is what happened here. And the middle one, so it's the mid-tones. Going to the left, I will increase the range between the highlights and the mid-tones. So now this area getting filled with the light and opposite, I could make it darker, um, the area from the mid-tones uh, to the shadow and uh, the mid-tones will be getting darker. So let's go back to one. And below we have one more range and also we have two more sliders. So the first one, uh, this slider allow us to um, basically cut out some color or um, it seems like it allow us to cut out the color but actually it still work with the light. So grabbing this dark slider, as you can see, I'm changing the output level. So let's move here. Uh, easy to understand would be that everything beyond this um, gray point here, uh, actually this gray point is the darkest point of the image. So everything beyond this gray point here will be filled with the light to make this to this level of gray. If I go further, everything beyond this point is filled with the light and so on. Opposite, it will be darkening now. So everything beyond this point is taking away the light. So the image getting darker overall. 
So now as you have idea how the sliders work, uh, let's move to the actual lights, the separate lights, red, green, and blue, and do some work then. So I'm moving to red first. And uh, let's start with the sliders. Here's all the fun. Most of the fun will be happening uh, here once we understand how does it work and working separately with each light and give us real power. So when I grab this dark slider, let's see what is happening. There's two things happening now. Uh, you would be right saying the color changes, but this is not the major thing. Uh, what you can notice, the image becoming darker. So we actually don't add any color. In this case, uh, it seems like we would be adding the cyan color. It's not what's happening. We take away the red light from the shadow area. So the shadow area becoming darker and it also becoming colder because uh, the red light is the warm, it has the warm color. When we take away the red light, it becoming uh, colder, of course. And if we go fully to the right, as you can see, we will not have any red light here. So we are left with uh, two remaining lights, uh, which is green and blue and mix of them, which is cyan in this case, or something closer to blue, something closer to the green. So all range of mix with the red light, uh, I'm sorry, green light and the blue light. When I will grab other side, everything beyond this point is filled with 100% of the red light. So I won't make this image completely red because we have also other lights on this image and we have the 100% of the red light with mix with other lights as well. And we cannot make it, uh, of course, completely dark now because we still have the other lights existing on this image. And when it comes to the mid-tones, uh, same idea. So as you can see, I will make mid-tones darker. So I'm taking away the red light here or adding it here. And below, it's really interesting, uh, many people would get confused here, but the same idea as before. Remember, everything beyond this point was brightened up to this level of gray, and the same thing happened now, but just with the red light. So um, other lights still allow, stay there, so it's still uh, darker, so we're not uh, bringing up everything here, but just the red light. That's why it gets so filled with the red light and uh, the image actually changing. If we go fully to the right, as you can see, uh, we have similar result to this one. And opposite, as you can see what is happening, everything beyond this point uh, will not have the red light anymore. And it will get in opposition these bottom sliders to the top sliders. As you can see, if I go to the right, we have two remaining colors and this is it. So as you can see, uh, all of the sliders here are important. This one and this one working in the opposition. So here, everything beyond this point is filled with the red light. Everything beyond this point doesn't have red light. And now we know how it works. So we have other lights. We can just see how they work when we go to the green. If I take away green light from the shadows, the shadows will get darker and we'll get these uh, colors of magenta. And now we have only red and blue remaining on the image. Light, of course. Here, as you can see, we fill these highlights here with 100% of the green light. And we can go here and also manipulate the light on the midtones, take it away or add it. And below, in a position, everything beyond this point get filled with the green light and everything beyond this point doesn't have green light. And the last one, now we can just see how it works. Opposite to blue is yellow. That's why the image become more yellow once we take away the blue light. If we add it, it will get more blue and brighter, of course, because every time we add the light, the image will get brighter. Here and on the bottom. We add blue light beyond this point, and here we take away light, so it becomes darker and more yellow. I really like how this looks once we take some of the blue light. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious, so probably at the end I could play a little bit uh, with this, as you can see, uh, more moody. 
what I would do here, actually, if I would like to not make make it this moody, but actually not so yellow here. It would take me some some thinking for sure, maybe something like this. And what I can do with the red, something like this probably. So basically, uh, this is it. I can brighten this a little bit more. Uh, how how I would do it? Probably go to RGB a little bit here. Brighten some of the mid tones. And this is it. That's how levels uh, work. I hope you found this intre interesting, but more so that you found this helpful and now you simply know exactly how the levels work. If you want to find more videos on adjustment layers and RGB, I recommend you some other of my videos on this channel. I did similar video on the curves even more detailed because I was explaining more about RGB. I didn't want to repeat myself with the RGB in this video. I talk about channel mixer, one of my favorite. Uh, I talk about selective color and so on. So make sure to check other videos that are equally helpful and explain all of the theory and practice behind adjustment layer. Thank you for watching and make sure you check the links in the description, links to my course page, link to my portfolio. You can find out what I exactly do on a daily basis and see you in the next video. Thank you.